Good morning, Vietnam. In the loneliness and isolation of Vietnam, a tiny transistor radio can remind you that a world is still out there. And what a world it is. Apocalypse 19 nous donne une belle révélation de cet événement. The time is 1300 GMT. This program is coming to you from the United States of America. This is Manila calling. Direct from Radio Australia. From Washington, the voice of America. This is London. Or the sounds from the enemy's camp of Radio Peking and the ranting shouts of a million Chinese demonstrating against you. Or Hanoi Hattie, reading our casualty lists over Radio Hanoi. The end of the list of more Americans killed in Johnson's war in South Vietnam over recent times. Corporal Barry W. Duff, Baltimore, Maryland. Under the glorious banner of the South Vietnam National Front for Liberation, and with their hearts burning with deep hatred for the U.S. aggressor gangsters and the traitorous lackeys, they will continue to take the offensive with consummate daring and fight most valiantly, dealing a hundred times or a thousand times heavier blows at the enemy. Vietnam will win. U.S. imperialism will win. People of the whole world unite. Down with U.S. imperialism. Long live the military friendship between the Chinese and Vietnamese people. Long live Chairman Mao Zedong. President Ho Chi Minh. Radio Peking wishes you all a pleasant good evening. And then there's the reassuring sound of home away from home. Good old Armed Forces Radio. This is Armed Forces Radio, Vietnam. Good evening and welcome now to Night Beat. Well, good morning and welcome back to the Don Buster on this Saturday morning. Today we salute... Eighth Tactical Bomb Squadron. Here is news on the hour from the Armed Forces Radio and Television Newsroom. Senate and House conferees were reported to have reached tentative agreement today. And the sounds of your countrymen, 10,000 miles away. The 2-1 delivery, flung on a bouncing ball near second base, and now pass it, shovels it for Gosey, in time for the fourth on Kellebrew. And that does it for the twin threat. Life as usual sounds so strange here. Do they know? Can they? Bong San. Play me. The Battle of Ayatrang. The Rock Pile, The Delta, Happy Valley, LZ X-Ray, Hill 400, Operation Crazy Horse, Paul Revere, Hawthorne, Hastings, Prairie, names, big names for a million small acts of heroism, for a thousand yesterdays of American courage, but they are yesterday and the war goes on. It is another day of war. Our night's patrols have returned. With first light, the rotors of our recon choppers whirl to life. Today we go after Charlie. We will drop into his backyard. Before the day is over, we'll meet him in battle. A 
assault plans have been drawn. Orders issued. Now, armed clusters of fighting men crowd the helipads, waiting to board their lift choppers. Officers brief their men for the last time. Uh, our intelligence indicates that uh, there's uh, probably a battalion, uh, a unit of battalion strength in the area there. Send Echo Company and Company Strength up on the high ground to see what they can stir up. Foxtrot and Hotel Companies will continue with tune-sized operations. The heavier contact was made yesterday uh, to clear out any possible VT that are in there. We've been making uh, entries into the area here, and uh, uh, at our level, from our, our standpoint, uh, I can only tell you one thing for sure, and that is that there are a lot of people out there who are not friendly to us. And at air bases throughout Vietnam, Air Force and Marine pilots prepare for close ground support strikes. For Demon 5-1, mission number 72472. You have a direct air support mission in 3-4. Your GCI will be Paris. Your fax, sign binder, one more ID card, your shot record, your Ronda dimension card, and dog tag. Bingo in the target area will be 5,300 pounds. If anybody sees any ground fire, call that out so the rest of us will be aware of it. We may want to change our tactics dependent upon the ground fire. We board our choppers. Seven men each with weapons, ammo, prayers. The first assault wave lifts off. On our way. Miles forward, our artillery pounds the landing zone. Charlie's there, waiting. We've got his undivided attention. Gunships, armed helicopters follow the artillery in, raking the landing zone with machine guns and rockets. From Chu Lai, Benwa, Da Nang, Phan Rang, Tonsonut or a dozen other airfields, our air support roars aloft. They'll be on call if the going gets rough. We're on a Navy aircraft carrier off the coast of Vietnam. Its flight deck shrieks with jets impatient for launch. They're part of our fighting team too. The launch command is given. We're now three minutes from the landing zone. Is Charlie there, dug in, waiting? Charlie. You try not to think about him, but you remember everything your buddy's ever said. He's jungle-wise, much more so than we are. Uh, we spend, in this unit particularly, 100% uh, of our time looking for him. And it's weeks at a time, uh, we won't see hiding a hair of him, yet he's all around us. Charlie in the field, the young fellow, who's maybe 18, 19, 20 years old, he's a kid and he's got an awful lot of guts. Once he does make contact with an American unit, He'll fight until uh, the last man is gone. Many times uh, we fought all day and not seen one. Pretty sly character. The way they fight, they're dirty. I mean, they don't care how they do it. Punch sticks, anything else, believe it. Just the way they go about it, and it's a smile, you can't see them, you can't find them. 
Yeah, you brought, right, you brought up on him for you. Yeah. When it hit you. He knows how to use every weapon in the book. He can use anything you drop. So you got to be real careful of him. He can be where you least expect him, and then again, where you expect him, he won't be. I'd, I'd say you hate him. I would. I, I hated him. First day, Jim got to get hit. I hated him ever since then. The main thing you had to worry about was getting uh, get out of those choppers, especially when a hot LZ. Getting out of those choppers and getting off the LZ. We're going in. Our chopper's gunner opens up on the tree line. Touchdown. Get out. Move out. Sometimes the LZ is quiet. But sometimes it's hot. Hot as hell. are voices and thoughts from battle. These men know what hell is like. It's, it, it was just like one great big nightmare, but then it's, it's reality. Men weren't just hit once, they were hit multiple, multiple times. Both arms, both legs, stomach, chest, head. Men were still saying, with three or four holes in them, Doc, I'm all right, just give me my rifle. I'll be okay, let me hold them off. Doc, I don't want to die just laying here. Give me my rifle. I'm going to die fighting. They were coming in so close, you could hear them whistle past you. You could see, you know, I was looking up, and I could, I seen this one just cut through the leaves, maybe three inches from my head. Looked to my side one time, and I could see one hit the dirt no more than three or four inches from my side. Grenade going off in front of the hole, grenade going off in front of me. I mean, right in front of me. I looked at it go off. And I figured. For a second, I thought it was blind. Just for a second, I thought I couldn't see, but then I looked up and I was all right. All kinds of Jesus Christ. It looked like a, I don't know, you can describe it like people say, it looked like a 4th of July. Because there was green tracers, yellow tracers, white, and our red ones. None of us thought we'd ever get out of there alive, believe me. None of us, not a one. Oh, what is it? What Rifle fire, machine gun fire, uh, grenades. Moans, groans, uh, gook sounding all over the place. At first, I got scared. Uh, and then, just wanted to kill. I can't explain it in words. It's, your blood gets hot. And you want to shoot them, but you can't shoot enough of them. Definitely, I was scared. Uh, that's true right there. Anybody that goes out there and stuff like that and says he's not, it's crazy. It's not, they, it's not that you're not scared to death, but you don't. You don't want to die, but so you just fight as hard as you can. And you're fighting so hard, you're concentrating on fighting so hard that you don't even think about death. You couldn't feel nothing. I lay down on sticks, thorns, normally hurt to beat the band. They weren't there no more. Just trying to get down as close to that ground as you could. I think you think about 20,000 times faster than usual. I don't know. The guy was. Tell you the truth, though. First night, I had to pray a lot because it was the first time that I really seen any action like that, and um, I was really scared. These kooks running down there, they, it, in a way, it changes. You look at them; they don't even look like humans anymore. To me, I didn't, I didn't have no sorry feelings about them at all, knowing that they might get you the next minute. The napalm was landing so close. If I'd had a couple of eggs, I could have fried them. Sky jockeys really deserve a job well done. From where I was, I think I just I could see him coming down, and one of them dropped a bomb so close it blew my helmet off. But I didn't care. I was still glad to see them. They were beautiful. They're always beautiful. Ask any foot soldier. These are the voices of Marine combat correspondents with units pinned down by enemy fire. Air support is there. We've got three uh, F-4B Phantoms from VMFA 115. 
holding an airstrike now just to our front, or a few hundred meters in front of us, and uh, they're dropping 1,000 pounders. There goes another one. That's what a 1,000 pounder sounds like, uh, hitting just a few hundred meters to our front. Here comes the next one now, number three. Range up. one napalm bomb right smack dab on the target. It was a beautiful run. You could almost read the insignia on that pilot's helmet. He was so low. Here he comes again, right in on the treetops again. Here he comes. He scraped and uh, dropped two napalm. Beautiful shot. These A4 pilots, uh, I've talked to them uh, at other times and uh, they all tell me that they love this close air support, and uh, they certainly do a tremendous job at their work, too. You're in the cockpit of a jet on a ground support mission. A forward air controller directs the dive bombing. Okay, the next bomb is coming up at 6 o'clock at uh, 200 meters. It is in the tree line. Condol 82-1 is turning in. Uh, I do four, no drop it here. That last, uh, last drop looked to me like it's uh, on the east side of the road. Don't you want them on the west? That's Roger. Uh, the target uh, is still at 9 o'clock at 100 meters, and that's the only drop I've observed so far. Uh, 82 one is in. And I do want them on the west side of the road. You're pretty well on speed. 15 slow. Stand by. Left, left. And the war in Vietnam is the war of the helicopter. It puts you in, it supplies you, it takes you out. We're with an American unit surrounded on a hilltop, blasting a landing zone for choppers while it fights for its life. Gunnery Sergeant Carl Hillstrom is there. Point to the fact that they're on all sides of us right now. To our left, to our right, to our front. We've been working on a hell of a zone. Don't bring a chopper in yet. Let's go, engineer! Men with chainsaws brave enemy fire to clear the landing zone. Heavy fire continuing. Just keep moving in this direction. I don't know if it's desirable. Yeah, 25 meters down. Position. All right, they're down here. Who, who are the bad guys? Hey, Don, you have people here, right? We're trying to evacuate our wounded. We must get a medevac chopper down. But each time one tries to come in, Viet Cong gunners open up and drive it off. Looks like the H-34, the Marine H-34 is coming in. Heavy fire, Charles. To our left again, the Huey coming in. The chopper tries again, its crew risking their lives.
He's coming in. He's down. Our wounded are moved aboard. Take off. They make it. Mission accomplished. Again. Another day of fighting ends. It is the day which ends, never the fighting. The last aircraft of the day's missions returns to its carrier. The foot soldier digs into the soil of Vietnam for yet another night. And a platoon marching the last mile to base camp lightens its fatigue with song. Americans, you ask how these men of yours endure, how they are winning this impossible war, how they fight on, and why. Listen, Americans, listen. In Vietnam, he fought the dirty Kong. And in Vietnam, he fought the dirty Kong. He fought it in the springtime and in the month of May. He fought it in the springtime and in the month of May. And if you asked him why the hell he fought him, and if you asked him why the hell he fought him, he fought him for the red, white, and blue. He fought him for the red, white, and blue. Come turn! Ah! They are here in Vietnam to fight, to build, to win. And they will stay as long as their nation asks. Today they bear the dangers and the burdens of war. Tomorrow they will wear the service ribbon and the pride. And both will say, this man served his country in Vietnam. Wednesday, Wednesday, three miles. Thursday, Thursday, four miles. Four miles. Friday, Friday, five miles. Six days, six 